What's up, everybody? Is it Wednesday or Tuesday? Monday. What is it? Is it Monday? Monday. Or it's Thursday? When Thursday. Is it? Let's go, Brandon. I agree. <laughs> am, I as confused, is, am I as confused as our president? It's Wednesday, right? It's Thursday? Pop, popcorn used to come on and popcorn. Drew, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Doing good, man. How's it going? chilling man we barely even talked before the show because uh we were i was like you know last minute had to jump on because of course you know i got a ton of shit to do when i got home um so we barely get to talk but right now the breaking news is that 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 chick who helped this dude escape from jail is dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound yeah They've been on the run for for ten days now, and it ends uh, tragically for her, I guess you could say. And uh, he is in custody. Yeah, uh, he was an Alabama murder suspect, and she was a jail boss. More specifically, she was the uh, former assistant director of corrections at the Lauderdale County Jail. Shit, yeah, and they were on the run for at least ten days, and uh, they were in a car crash. Because they were found um, in a car and they were driving. They, they actually purchased. Uh, just oh, shit. It's a bulls in there right off the, the fuck. Holy shit, Bullsy. What's up, brother? Thank you, man. Jesus Christ. He Bullsy blessing us. He Bullsy blessing. It's a Bullsy blessing. It's a Bullsy blessing. I can survive falling down the stairs. Can you survive that? Um, probably not, dude. No, I could survive falling down the stairs. I'm still in, I'm not in great shape at all, but I'm also not in bad enough shape to fucking die from a flight of stairs. You know? Jeez, I'd hope not. No, you push like an 80-year-old woman down a flight, or you do what some woman did to a woman the other day somewhere. I don't even think it was, was it wasn't in New York City. I'm not sure where it is, but one of you might have heard this story out there. There was this old woman walking down the block, and this young, blonde-headed girl out of nowhere just walks up to her and pushes her, and when she pushes her, she falls and lands on her head, obviously. And what happens? She hurts herself so bad, she had neurological shit and died. Yep. That, she was actually a redhead, if I remember yeah, right. Yeah, redhead. Uh, yeah, the because... Was. Yeah, the she woman... She ended up turning herself in. Yeah, because the woman, before she died, even though she had brain damage, she was telling them it was a red-headed woman who pushed me down for no reason at all. I don't even know her or nothing. And she still reported that before she died. I think she died maybe six days later or something. Yeah, she. I think she coded out in the, maybe in the ambulance. I'd have to look that up, but uh, elderly woman, New York, pushed down. Yeah, dude. Um, you know, it's funny. Horrible. It's in, um, in one of the scary story videos that I was listening to, uh, one of the new ones, uh, they had actually, he had talked about that one. Woman wanted for allegedly shoving 87-year-old grandmother um, Jesus Christ. surrender to NYPD. 26-year-old Lauren Pazienza. Pa- Pazienza. Fuck Jefferson. 
So horrible, man. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it, you know, you don't really want to come on with breaking news of somebody dying and this and that, but these two were whack, whack jobs, these two. They shared the same last name, ironically, um, which some people were like, how the fuck did, what are they married? It's like, no, they just have the same last name. Luckily enough, these two idiots. Um, but apparently they, they were like, they had a ton of money on them or some shit I heard and um and i mean like she fucking actually shot herself she actually after they ended the chase yeah she actually shot herself you know what i mean like like she realized that her cozy lifestyle was done he didn't see it any differently because he's just going back to where he's gonna be you know but she she had a whole change of life plan for her if she allowed herself to get caught so i could see the mentality of this uh, they, they describe it as a jailhouse romance, which isn't the first time. And I actually sent you a couple of links yeah, to yeah. Uh, the stories. Uh, if you ever watched Unsolved Mysteries, there's been stories of this in the past. There was Diane oh, yeah. Broadbeck and Kay Beeman. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah. And Kay Beeman was a really big one, too, because they actually um, stayed together afterwards and actually lived together until she died. Well, Drew, also on the docket tonight, we're going to be talking about the one and only Dave Chappelle, how... He spoke to his attacker. He actually mm -hmm. spoke to the, the attacker and found out why this guy fucking bum-rushed him. And, uh, you know, look at this guy, dude. This guy got fucked up. So if you're Will Smith, <laughs> right, you're allowed to go onto a stage and you're allowed to smack somebody, right? Nothing happens to you, right? But this dude, because he's a nobody, he's not an actor, he's not a fucking, you know, superstar, he gets his ass pummeled. And he's a scumbag, Right? Mm -hmm. But Will Smith does it, and what happens? Oh, you know what? You're not allowed to win an award for 10 years for the inconvenience. You know what? For the inconvenience, we're not, we're not going to let him win an award for 10 years. That's what we came up with. That's me imitating these low lives who obviously operate the fucking uh, the awards show and um like it, and these hollywood people like it's just a loud you know like this guy got pummeled and i'm not saying what he did was right not by any means but there is a double fucking standard in this city in this city in this whole fucking country right now and it's like if you're on this side of things you can get away with stuff if you're on that side of things you go to jail if you're on this side of things you you know what i mean it's, it's i'm going to disagree a little bit with the two scenarios you brought up because with will smith he walked up and everything seemed peaceful up until the time he slapped chris rock to which he instantly turned around and walked off where so the threat was so quick and then gone immediately after that there was no re no reason to really tackle him and rough him up because he was already walking off the stage and going back to where he was sitting. This guy tackled him. All right, true, and, true. You're right about that. And was still there, and they, they no, you are right about that. You break so it down I, I like that. A little different. I what's, know, but but, but still though, does he like look at this guy's face? I mean, yeah, I think I think you know he deserves I mean? like, street justice. Fuck yeah. Yeah, but I'm not saying I disagree with it. I'm just saying there's just a big difference, man. You know, like look at the side of that dude's head. It looks like a fucking another head's about to pop out of it. I think it was uh, might have been Casey who brought this up last night when we were talking about it. But if you remember when a dude rushed the stage on Bret Hart during the Hall of Fame ceremony, yeah, uh, I remember that. the uh, revival I roughed up that, the guy yeah. who did that too. Yep. He got his own little taste of street justice. Yeah, it, it's funny that you mention uh, Chris Rock, by the way, because Chappelle actually had a chance to talk to Chris Rock. And he said, at least you got by smacked with someone of uh, rapport. And <laughs> Rock fired back by saying, I got back, I got smacked by the softest N-word that ever rapped. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> I fucking saw that, man. That's crazy. By the way, I've got a shot here for uh, Bolsey. I was not expecting to drink tonight. I didn't even have any ice. But uh, I'll do this one for him if, uh, if you ever do pull the cameras up and I'll... Uh, Hit him with a little shot ski for oh. uh, for the generous uh, donation earlier. All right, but, hold on one second. Hold on, I gotta get a ton of shit ready. I mean, I, I didn't have anything ready to go. No, it's all good. Hey, take your time. I'll, I'll uh, if you want, I'll tell everyone what uh, was actually said between Chappelle and the uh, the lunatic. Chappelle, no. <laughs> Chappelle, no. Chappelle. The guy's name. The guy's Chappelle. name was Isaiah Lee. No, sorry. Go ahead. And Chappelle was adamant that he wanted to talk to him. Here you go, Bullsey. Cheers, man. Cheers to Bullsey. Bill Bullsey, thank you. And anybody else out there, if you want to check out the donations listed below me, they're down there listed. Thank you so much for that, Bullsey. Shout out to you. 
Chappelle said that he asked Lee why he did it, and the accused attacker, Isaiah Lee, launched into a story about how his grandmother had been forced out of her Brooklyn neighborhood because of uh, gentrification. Uh, Lee's onstage attack was supposed to shed light on her situation. Uh, Chappelle said that Lee, who two years ago put out a rap song about Chappelle, appeared to be mentally ill, and Lee's older brother Aaron Lee revealed in a Rolling Stone interview Wednesday that his sibling struggles with mental illness and takes medication. What? That's from the New York Post. Oh, shit. Yeah, they, and, they, uh, a couple other shit was said. I'm going to put up on the screen in a second here. But Did you uh, see the weapon he had? Yeah, you know, it was a plastic gun with a knife on it, like a hardened plastic. Yeah, it looked like a 9 millimeter that had been turned into a musket. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I was like, wow, that that's... I, I guess kind of interesting. We joked about it last night. I said, wouldn't you rather have a gun or a knife disguised? Wouldn't you rather have a gun disguised as, as a knife instead of a knife disguised as a gun? <laughs> you bring this thing to a gunfight, you're going to get your ass shot. He, he, now, if you bring a knife to a fight and people think they're dealing with a knife, you know, it'll be a little bit different until a bullet pops out of the fucking knife. You know what it looked like? It looked like one of those things that you would, uh, that you would, um, uh, it kind of looked like a, like the type of thing that you would, uh, what's it called again? 3D print? Right, yeah. Like, it kind of looked like that type of fucking plastic on it, like, you know what I mean? Um, oh, why the fuck did I just do that? It looked like, the, you know, it was obviously, you know, It looked homemade. like a toy gun I had as a kid. It was homemade, yeah. It was totally homemade, but still, though, I mean... Golf a bit, it was a real gun, like we said so many times. You know, it's like my default, my default. Cop. I need blue chew. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, we'll chip in together. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know, man. Who's this? Wait, hold on. Uh, Tommy now? No, come on, Tommy. Not every show that we do with him. <laughs> You got to fuck around and do the. We're doing a show, brother. Give us a little bit. God, give me a little bunk. Anyway, there's some tweets. Uh, there's some shit that uh, a couple of these guys were saying uh, after he talked to this dude. Chappelle spoke with him. Um, do you have that article? The, the one with these pictures? No, no, no. With the rest of the, uh, I don't know. I sent you an article earlier today. I thought you were referring to that one. Oh, I, well, I pulled one up from New York Post because it gave a little more info. Because I, I was looking oh, okay, around to okay. see what else I could snag up, and so I stuck with that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, in some of the pictures, you can actually see how Isaiah's arm was twisted around back. Oh yeah, you know, kind of twisted yeah, in you a, can. A, a unique way. And at first, when I saw that, I thought, well, maybe that was just the picture was taken a certain way, and then. You know, after three or four different pictures with his arm the same way, I'm like, hey, damn. They, well, uh, the motherfucker was handcuffed arm. on that hand, too, though, bro. Yeah. The <laughs> dude, come on. That's, like, <laughs> fucked up, dude. The guy was fucking handcuffed on that I arm at first, that. dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, what like the... they just give two they shits They dog this show. guy out, bro. They dog <laughs> this dude the fuck out, bro. You know? And, you know, even Busta Rhymes was getting in on it and busting up that dude. Like, he was like, I'm a... I'm a straight up bust it. I'm a bust. You know, he was like, <laughs> the bust, a bust. He was just, I'm a stomp on this mother. I'm a ripping and romping. New York, North, kicking like an ant cop there. Yeah, chicken, chicken. You know what I mean? He was like, beat this motherfucker. Beat this. Beat this off, man. Yo, let me beat this motherfucker. Beat him. And Chris, uh, even what's his name is getting in there. Jamie Foxx was like, beat this motherfucker. He's stomping on him. You know, even the other uh, dude, uh, what's the other guy? The little guy. Uh, Chris Tucker? Chris or? Tucker was like, beat this mother... No, not Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker's like, do you Eddie understand Griffin? the words that are coming out of my mouth? No, yeah, I'm talking Eddie, about... Eddie Griffin? I'm, I'm trying to think of... He's the most politics. popular black comedian right now. Who is that? Who is the most popular? I'm brain farting on that. Dave Chappelle, you could say, maybe? Well, yeah, I mean, I would, I would say Dave Chappelle. But All right, well, what about what's his name? Who's made a million movies lately? He made way more movies than Chappelle's made. I'm, I'm drawing. Chappelle ain't making that movies no more. Chappelle ain't want nothing to do with them movies. 
Um, but this dude's making movies left and right, making bank, and he's been in Hollywood for over fucking 25, 30 years almost already. And now he's a star. He just became a star in the last, you know, 10 years. Really. Like a mega star. Uh, a short guy. Just, a short, just, just, really just, short, just, short black guy. He always does movies with The Rock. Oh, um... Fuck. The fucking... With the, how can we not think of this guy's name? Uh, let me, uh, <laughs> let me see. Kevin Hart. Jesus yeah. Christ. Thank yeah. you. Oh, hey, Wandy. Thank how you. How do we not remember a heart? Um, meanwhile, you know, uh, yeah, but Kevin Hart, man, like you could say he is the most well-known number one black comedian right now. Would you say? Uh, that, that might be a, a good example either him or Chappelle or help maybe Chris Chappelle. Rock it may be Chris Rock after the last month or so but for other reasons obviously yeah um I just put something in the Skype chat there if you listen to like the last 40 seconds I wouldn't put it on screen because the video is owned by TMZ now but like the last 40 seconds you hear some of what Chappelle had to say to the audience after it all happened and some of it was funny as fuck oh I heard some of that at, yeah, at one yeah. point he goes he gets the microphone back. I think the first thing he says is, it was a tranny. Yeah. <laughs> no, he said it was a trans man or something like a that. trans man right? something, yeah. Yeah, some shit like that. Um, and just and then, in his voice makes it ten, ten and times And then he was funny. like, and then the funny thing was, he was like, yeah, they're over there stomping the shit out of his ass right now. Like, you know, like say like, <laughs> yep. you know, and that dude was getting stomped the fuck out. I mean, uh, he was getting stomped the fuck out. I can't believe he spoke to him. I'm an inspiring rapper. I'm having a baby in the side of my head now since your man hit me. You know, fucking even, uh, what's his name was there? The Jewish guy that used to be on, um... Uh, 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 Comedy Central. He had that show for the longest time. Now the other guy's got it. The black dude on Comedy Central that has that show, The Daily Show. Um, He's Stewart, talking about John Stewart. Stewart, right? Yeah, John Stewart. Even he was stomping on that dude. I think everyone wanted to. John Stewart was like, <laughs> he was fucking throwing pennies on him. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, even he was stomping ass. Bro, they all beat his ass, bro. Rightfully so. Like I said, I I think he deserved every bit of it. I'm, beat I'm that down with uh, down, you know, someone bro. charging a stage. I'm down with uh, you know someone getting a little bit of an ass beaten for their trouble. You know, yeah, beat that motherfucker down, down to the ground. Um, and uh, Johnny Depp, uh, you know he. Uh, yeah. So what's to do with this? So you ready for this now? <laughs> what is it now? So the latest with the Deppster. <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. been following this really close because I like it. It's intriguing to me, uh, especially with the court aspect of it. You know, to listen like all the because he was watching this dude. Okay, so they had this guy. There's two things. One, one they had this guy on a live feed. I think it was you know a, a, like a like a you know like a a video talk, right? And this guy was testifying on this video talk in in court to all these people, and. They had the camera locked on Johnny Depp's face in reaction to what the guy was saying and doing on the fucking screen as the lawyers were asking this dude question. And now this dude is a guy who delivered to Johnny Depp's house for about like six years and knew them kind of by delivering food to them a lot and kind of knew them that way. Okay. But So they call this guy in and ask him all kinds of fucking stupid questions that he has no clue about, Right. And this guy was, he was vaping while he was being it, like on the stand. So you cold do that? on the stand. I don't know, dude, but it Hell, showed half the, the bars I go to won't allow it. It showed the photo of this guy blowing smoke out of his nostrils, right? Like a fucking bull, right? And you just see the whole entire smoke filling up the whole entire screen. screen and then you look over at Johnny Depp and he's dying laughing in court. And it is the funniest fucking shit because oh, this, this thing has been like, they're going to make a movie and he's going to play himself Johnny Depp in this because it's it's reached that level now hard doing coke you know him fucking I mean it's 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 reached that level the photos that came out of Johnny Depp with laying there on that fucking couch bro Indian style dude he was fucking gone bro he was he was he was flying dude 
He was flying. Is was this guy in a car in a white shirt? What? The the guy who was vaping that you're talking about. Yes. Was he in the corner yes. or was he in a car? No, he was in a car, bro. Okay, I found He was it. testifying yeah, a from a car. And they were asking him questions like um, did you ever see him like, you know, um, be wild with her or like, you know, restrain her or grab her wrist or, and he was like, no, I just, you know, I deliver stuff and I don't really know what you're talking about. And, he, and then all of a sudden he's like, <laughs> this guy's fucking mustache too, you know? <laughs> And it's, it's like this it, it only goes to about here. It doesn't even connect. No, I know. The guy was out of his mind. He's just continuing to drive. And let me tell you, dude, don't, don't think for a second that Johnny Depp ain't staring at this and going, dude, this would make the best fucking movie ever. <laughs> okay? Because he is, okay? Because these guys think of movies. They think of shit like we do, and they actually do it. Okay? So Johnny Depp's sitting there going, dude, who would I get to play this fucking guy? And he's lining up people in his brain right now. And I already lined up who I would get to play that guy who was in that car. And it would have to be some Hawaiian type actor, you know what I mean? Who can play like a stoner type? Because this guy was gone, bro. He said he seemed like he was high, okay? And he's testifying in this fucking hearing, and it was just so funny. He's like, I don't know. And every question was like all this shit, and he would go, I don't know what you're. No, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't, and they like if they put up every I don't remember in a row, it would just be him nonstop going. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. He didn't remember nothing. And you know was, they they could actually they could get the uh, fucking restaurant manager from Fifty First Dates, that fat woman. They could get oh, her to shit. do him. Just just put some like fake little mustache on her. And you know what else, dude? You know what else goes on in this thing lately? So, oh, well, the other thing that was funny was, um. All right, so it was... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. I'm watching this game real quick. They just went on a power play here. Hold on. NHL hockey. Uh, Rangers got their asses handed to them. So bad tonight. Pittsburgh just dominate, dominating them tonight. I think it's like 6-1. So that's nice to see. Damn. Yeah. Um, but wait, hold on. Let me fix this thing real quick. All right. But, yeah, the other thing was, like, um, what was it again that I wanted to talk about from that? It was something about, uh, oh, Johnny Johnny Depp is getting sent all kinds of gifts and money and and Why would signing. you send someone who's I don't so know. well off financially? And, dude, they're, they're sending them gifts and money. And, and you know what else they're sending them? They're literally sending the part, like, they're all signing this thing to get him to go back to be on... Um, uh, to be the captain, hook captain, whatever the fuck again, uh, whatever he is in that movie. Uh, but Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow, yeah. They they're signing a petition to get him to be to come back to that, doing that. Like that's how much they want this guy to it, like. It, did the movie ever come to a full conclusion? I never watched. The I don't. I don't even. Dude, tell you. If it didn't oh, come God. to a conclusion, dude, to tell you the truth, I don't even have a clue because I've never watched one of them fully. I'm sorry, I just was never into like you know. I was just never into that, like, whatever is, in it. whatever is in it, you know what I mean? Like, I was never into that, like, I don't know. I could see how people like that shit, you know what I mean? But I just was never into it. So I, I, I saw the first one. I think I even saw it in theaters, and it, it was good. I just didn't get hooked into where it's like, I've got to watch the second. I've got to watch the third. I'm and, Captain you know, have... Jack Sparrow. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. So I take it you Sparrow. didn't hear of the TikTok trend that's going on what with this thing. What's human matter? Um, what the one with his doodles? No, what no. there's another so one now. People in this one's coming into the Skype chat for you, too. They are now, um, doing memes. People are using their pets and putting blonde hair on their cats and shit, yeah, and posing the cat in a way that looks like Amber Heard and then putting like a sentence or whatever <laughs> below it. So, like this first one you're gonna see on here, it's an orange cat with blonde hair on it dude, and just staring the... with this dirty look. I turn to look at him. Dude, what <laughs> in the fuck, bro? Hold on, bro. Hold on. I gotta do it a different way though. Um, dude, what the like is this really like and people are doing this? <laughs> Uh, people are doing this. There's dude? actually a TikTok video in there you can play, and it shows all the different. Ones. Why? Why are you people doing this shit? Look at this. Would you look at this, bro? Like what the fuck, dude? This is now. Like... <laughs> what the fuck, dude? What, what do you mean? Why? Why not? So bizarre. 
It is fucking bizarre, dude, what goes on in 2022, bro. I'm sorry. 2022. What? What? It was so bizarre. Did you call me? Chad? Okay. Could you imagine if this shit was happening during the pandemic when people had a lot of time on their hands, what they could do? I, I call me a queef. I, I just, no, dude, like, because, I don't know, man, 2022 is just a, just a weird, it's weird, bro, it's so, like, over-the-top meme-like shit, you know, like, over-the-top, just, everything goes in trends, you know? I'm surprised we haven't seen uh, Tony Montana in front of the mound of cocaine with her, her face embedded over it. God, bro, what, the, what like, what the fuck, man? There's got to be so much better shit out there that they can do. With, oh, that's just so like weird shit. A cat like dressing your cat, like actually spending the time to put some, like to put that little hat on your cat and shit. You know, hat on your cat. The cat your hat, hat on your cat. Your hat on your cat instead of cat in a hat. Cat in a hat. Your hat on the cat. Um, Dude, I'm looking at some of these that are rolling by on the video they put in there. <laughs> They got one with a do rag on its head and hair coming the out, fuck, like dark dude. hair coming out. Uh -huh. <laughs> People are fucked, dude. How do you so yeah, there, there's a lot of shit coming out about uh, you know whether it be the uh, whether it be the actual trial or just the the way people are fucking around with it because if people are just having the time of their lives on this. You figure how much money do. Uh, you know, recording studios, movie studios pay to have Johnny Depp or even Amber Heard in their movies, and you're just getting it for free in a court case. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Um, and who decides what? What? You know, like who decides? Now, obviously, the the comp like the cable network that covers them, or, or television network that covers them, like CBS or NBC or whatever it is, right? They decide whether they want to cover this or not, right? Obviously. But who decides in the court whether a trial is like, hey, it's open to the public, which means camera crews and this and that can come in here. And who decides on, no, it can't. I know, like, federal shit, you don't really get to have a camera in federal shit, right? I don't think. Right, and so in that case, it's the law that determines that. But I would be willing to bet, and I'd have to look more into it, but I, I think it would be the judge. You know... Oh yeah, you're right. I think it is, and and you know how like uh, our our country is so into these trials, and like you know ever since the OJ shit and the day of the trials and all the shit like the Menendez brothers and you know it's like all this shit that they put on TV and they cover. And it's like they know which ones to fucking go and tap into because, like, think of this court case that has been so wide covered, right? And so many things are going on and responding to it, which is not over yet. And a lot of people, I bet you, like, 70% of Americans would turn around and tell you, uh, that, that case is over, right? A lot of people think this case is over. Like, it's over. Oh, remember that when they were? No, this shit's still going on every week. Mm -hmm. You know, and they fucked up the other day. And this is the other thing that I wanted to talk about before. They fucked up the other day because I don't know if you know about this story that was out like a day or two ago about how Johnny Depp and his lawyer both fist pumped each other for a reason in court and nobody knew why. And then they found out why. And it's crazy because like the, everything that happens in this case is crazy shit. So... The reason why they fist pumped each other and nobody knew why, they, they started to find out, obviously, because when she was on the stand, right, mm -hmm. and she mentioned Johnny Depp's ex-wives, okay? She mentioned one of his ex-wives, okay? Right. And when she did, she broke an agreement between both fucking attorneys and the judge before the case started that... Um, you're not allowed to bring in ex-husbands, wives, girlfriends, boyfriends into the case mm -hmm. between both sides. And it was done like that for a reason, because I think both sides had shit to cover up as far as being nutbags. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it, it still shows anyways. Right. So they agreed. Their attorneys, the judge, all agreed. And the, and the thing is, if you break that while you're on the stand and you can't recant something that you've said under oath and during while they're typing that out and shit, there's no way you can take that back. So when she said something about his ex-wife and it was for a split second, she referred to her or some shit that she did that was like for a split second, she broke that rule which now means that they can now bring in any one of her ex-boyfriend's husbands, anybody that had any kind of sexual affair or love or any interest at all with her. So did you hear about this? Because it was reported. I did in a, not, no. Yeah, it was reported in a couple of places. And, and it is true because I wasn't sure what that whole fist pump thing was about. And everybody was speculating on it. And other news networks were like basically, you know, guesstimating what it was. They were just guessing and acting like they knew. But if you just waited a little while, you find out, bang, and then I found out the real deal, and it was because she broke that fucking rule. So it's like a fucking big movie. It's like a written script. Like these fucking, they're all actors, and they're in a written script that's alive on air. It's like a soap opera. Well, and what happens at the end of this? Someone owes someone money? So Yeah, he's suing it's, her. It's not, this is his... not even facing time in jail or anything. Well, so this is she's going to owe a lot of money to him, and, and she's going to lose out on a lot of shit that she would have had the rights to as far as, like, money that they have to split or shit like that. Movie if rules. She, if she Future loses this. Rules. Well, she already... People are saying she already fucked herself up as far as, like any future roles and people are saying that they took her part in this new up and coming Aquaman movie and they limited it and actually, you know, turned it like, you know, turned it like trimmed it. Yeah. Down, trimmed like it down on the, like that, it ended right? up on the editing floor, brother, because of this, you know what I mean? So it goes to show you like what can happen and shit, dude, you know, like the, the, uh, the, the public, the court of public opinion, Right is not it's always right stronger. it's not always right right but it controls the narrative bingo yep that's what it is if you're if you're guilty in public opinion then you get found guilty in the court or if you're found guilty not guilty in the court sometimes you're still guilty on the public opinion kind of like oj simpson who was found not guilty of a murder right of double murder and people, he was also held liable in in a court for uh, wrongful death uh, suits that that they uh, beat him in. Mm -hmm. So he could be found not guilty of double murder, but then he was still, you know, liable for killing these people. So you know, it's just you fucked up. You mentioned the Menendez brothers a little bit ago, and it reminded They're so me. They're so hot. Did you know they're so hot, and I want to fucking like have a jailhouse love affair with both of them. You hear me? Did you know, dude? They those... were on a basketball player's official NBA hoops card. Yes, in the Mark background, Jackson. I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. They're in the background, dude. And you know what's fucked up, and bro? It was the day I think the game. They figured it out. The game happened the day after they killed their parents. The game that. that oh yeah, and they were there, fucking all the money in the world to spend, dude. They went right out and started spending money and driving around and they all this shit and stuff. And then people were like, "Look at these motherfucking brazen ass motherfuckers, bro." They were like, "Hey, they didn't give a fuck, bro." They were like, "That dude is dead. We're doing whatever we want." Um. But yeah, they uh, they're scumbags. They were on the NBA fucking card. Yeah, I remember seeing that not too long ago, and that was just like God. You got fucking. They slaughtered their parents, dude. Like, and then and then said that their parents like beat them and did all kinds of crazy shit to them. And yeah, it, it was uh, nobody really believed it. Either. That was a whole different story. I mean, you talk about stories from the '90s that were just yeah. insane. There was quite a few of but them. But they went out one. and partied right away and spent money and drove around the car and bought things. And... They were heartless. I mean, regardless yeah. of what their parents may have done, even if they their parents were abusive or whatever. I mean, to walk Dude. away from that, that heartless. I mean, either their parents did some really fucked up shit to them, or they were fucked up. The Colorado parents. Avalanche, uh -huh. dude. They are up three games and none, and they're up one nothing in the first period. They're going to sweep this fucking uh, Nashville Predators team. Uh, Rangers getting slapped around. Uh, that's perfect. Love it. I mean, oh, I know what the other thing you were wanting to talk about was. Yes. Was, uh, Doctor Strange is opening. Yeah, it, it opened. Yeah, did you see how much money it made? $187,420,998. <laughs> yeah, dude. 
Yeah. Which makes it 11th of all time as far as opening weekends. Uh, 11th all time? Holy 11th shit. 11th all time. Uh, there's several Avenger, Avengers movies. The one from 2019 has the number one spot. Spider-Man No Way Home's number two. You've got two Star Wars in there. Jurassic Park 2015. Black Panther. And what's and the number one movie Life. again? Avengers Endgame. That's the number one all-time grossing on a weekend? For opening weekend, yeah. $357 million. Said, So it actually game, almost doubles end game. what this one did. It's still number one, Endgame, huh? Yep. End and nothing's game. even came close to it, because even Spider-Man No Way Home end uh, did game, $100 million less game, than that. Said, but... end game, end game. I said, still number one, end game. I said, end game, end game. All the nerds love the show, movie game, game. All the nerds love the movie, end game, game. And that was a great movie, though, bro. And I remember waiting. All right, so I remember going to see Infinity War, right? And then going to myself, I cannot wait another year or whatever the fuck they're going to want me to wait to see Endgame. Because you knew when Doctor Strange looked at um, looked at um, Iron Man and said, it's now the Endgame, you know, you're like, that's got to be the name of the movie. It's just got to be. You know, and and I knew it. I remember watching it and saying to myself, that's got to be the name of this movie coming out after this one. And Endgame beat Infinity War, right? Where is Infinity War in that whole top ten? Number three, right behind oh. Spider-Man No Way Home. Wow. So Spider-Man No Way Home was the fourth most? Is second. So Avengers oh, wait, Endgame, second. $357 million. Spider-Man No Way Home, $260 million. What? Uh, Avengers Infinity War, $257 million. Now, keep in mind, Spider-Man No Way Home came out in December 2021. It opened up to less screens than either of those two movies because Dude, of, what we know f- why. Fuck. Bro, wait Just a second. Just think of how much that movie could have done if all the theaters were open and people were going out as much as they normally would. Dude, Marvel is dominating the field. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. are, their movies just are mega blast. Like they're like, you know what? Dump twenty million, dump forty million into it, and we'll make back three hundred fucking million back. You know what I mean? We can pay everybody, and we can make money for us. I'm curious what the budget was for God, uh, Doctor bro. Strange because it's fucking crazy, bro. I'm curious how how looser they're getting with their budgets. And let me tell you, wait, I want yeah, easy. yeah. Go look up, yeah, definitely look up that budget because I wonder how much they spent on that movie to make that much money back. Because it's like almost a no brainer. You're gonna make that money back. You know what I mean? I mean, Spider Man, really? Spider Man has come this far. That it fucking opens up to that type of fucking dude, dude. That's insane. After COVID, well, really, still like at the tail end of COVID. Wow. Not like you said, not a lot of theaters opened. All that shit, and that movie comes out and just fucking this this web shooting, come shooting web, frozen rope fuck comes out and goes number two. Hey, you want to know something? They mentioned Spider Man in um in uh Doctor Strange Part Two. They mentioned Spider Man. Yes, they do. And then they said they made a comment and said, "Does he shoot his web out of his butt in the movie?" <laughs> That's what they said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Two hundred million was the budget. So they are. They're just going balls to the wall in these budgets. <sighs> Dude, two hundred million dollar budget, right? Mm-hmm. And then they made back how much on that movie? 187 domestically, but they've done over 400. And million That's on the weekend. Already. So almost on the well, weekend. No, but you're not even worldwide it's at 451 oh there you go so like just u.s they already made back right. what they paid for the movie it just it's in the already US the, in the third f- highest first weekend film of the year first weekend they made back practically in the u.s what they paid for the movie and then worldwide they had like you know they 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 doubled what they spent mm-hmm. they doubled Here, what they spent in one weekend worldwide here's- Here's that something interesting to keep in mind. Wow. It, it is already number three they of the double. year for highest grossing just out of this weekend. Number two is the Battle of Lake Chan- dude, G- dude, dude. Changjin. Um, just think of the world we live and, in, and bro. And then number one is Batman. So Batman, real quickly, Batman brought in $767 million so far. Doctor Whoa. Strange has already done $451 million. Yo, Batman was, pretty, Batman. Batman was pretty good, man. I've seen Batman like four times already now. And the more I watch it, the more I th- the more I love it. Honestly, you know. And and the first time I watched it, I was kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, I pulled the Tommy NC twenty ten. I was, mm-hmm. 
<laughs> but you still gave it a 11 out of 10, right? I gave it a 15 out of 10, bro. Oh, just like go. Tommy. I was like, you know what? I got to fucking do this. Oh, and, uh, you know, it's got to be done. And no, no actually, I gave it like a seven, a seven and a half. You know, there was one part where <laughs> there was one part where they were. And I this is not a spoiler or anything. This won't ruin anything. I would never do that to you guys if you haven't seen it yet. But one part where they're falling through something, they turn into paint for like 10 seconds, bro, right? Mm -hmm. And it is the fucking coolest shit I've ever seen in a movie before. I honestly, it was so... And I saw it in 3D, which I highly recommend to go see it in like a real 3D. Uh, that's where I saw a real 3D. And it was like, I highly recommend to go see it like that. Honest to God, like it's worth it. It is worth it, cause it's it was like the 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 little things are so much cooler um, when you're wearing the 3D and you could see it like that, cause it was just really fucking cool that way. Isn't it funny how th that that technology was so new? Even even when we were kids, I mean, even though it had been around for a while, it, it just seems so new. And, yeah. Well, uh, I remember in the 80s, man, it was everything was 3D. You could buy the glasses at like 7-Eleven or, or your Circle K or and you can go home and Channel 5 that night was playing like, you know, uh Freddy, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street or this or that and they would put it in 3D. You know, and, yeah, and you had you, know, to, you had to have the right channel, it had to be the right kind of show and everything, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, I mean, if you, like, lived in that area where they were doing it, they put it out in 3D, and you, all you had to do was wear the glasses. If you didn't have the glasses, it would look blurry to you, basically. Right. You know what I mean? Right, no, that's what I'm saying, is uh, that, you know, if you, if you went and know what the them, fuck. but you had to have the right show, you couldn't just pull up the basketball game. And I didn't know what the fuck you was... <laughs> was in it. I didn't know what the fuck was in it with you. God. Stop Look, the let's see when they were invented. Stop the baloney, Drew. Okay, the proof is in the pudding. All right. Kenneth Dunkley. Motherfucker! Don't say that name again, bro. He gets mad when people say Kenneth, you know, D. So, but anyway, um, he invented that? That's what I'm seeing. He's best known in the field of holography for inventing and patenting three-dimensional viewing glasses. Oh. When I was a kid, it was all red and blue. Those old red and blue fuckers, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, now they're and clear. Now they're they just are, like right? glasses or whatever. The, uh, yeah. the last ones I wore. Oh, yeah, they're like tan a little bit, like, for me. Like, they're just no, a little... They could be, but I mean, they don't have the two different colors anymore. No, Drew, they're tan, okay? <laughs> God, no, I'm just fucking with you. But no, they are, you yeah, they you don't... You go in there looking like Max Scherzer wearing sunglasses. Dude, Scherzer's a weird-looking fuck he is, but you know what? He's so good, that fucking guy, dude. I had no clue he had, I mean, I've, I've known monster. for a long time, but when he first, He's a came, monster. When he first uh, came to the major leagues, yeah. I was looking up his profile card because, you know, he got popular pr pretty quickly. Yeah. I pulled up his profile picture, whatever his card, I was kind of reading about him. I look up at his face, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? He's a monster. You know, if you look at him, he looks like a monster. Um, He really is. Like, the, 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 it's, it, dude. He got thrown out of a game the other night, and he wasn't pitching. Do you understand that? How did he do that? Somebody struck out, and the ref and the ump called it like high on the on the you know high strike zone, and like called the guy out. And when he walked off, Scherzer went up to the top of the dugout. He's not even in the game. He's not even pitching in the game. He's just hanging out. And he was sore it happened, and they played his replay from the dugout, like what made him react. And he's sitting there watching the game. He's even laughing with this guy next to him. And all of a sudden, he sees the pitch, and he looks at it and looks at the ump, and he goes, I can't believe he just called him out. and Because he, I guess he saw where the pitch was or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he got up, and he started barking at the fucking ump, and the ump just turned around, and he was like, bang, you're out. You're, and he had to leave. And he's not even fucking in the game. Like, and I'm like, you know what? That's a pretty good teammate. You know what I mean? Like that shows. That makes uh, it, you know, I guess there was no fear of uh, you know any issue with that because if he wasn't planning on playing anyways, the game would have had to have gone to fucking 27 innings. For yeah, him yeah, to consider yeah. it. You know. Yeah. And even then, he'd probably be the last person they poll. Yeah. Because start, uh, start having the catcher throw before he's that. going That's every six what, days. Every six, every six days he goes, no matter what. Wow, they've got him on a six-game rotation? Yeah. six days? Every six days. Okay, so 
So it's probably four or five games then. I got you. Yeah, because they added another starter to the Mets rotation this year. And, dude, I hate the fact that we have to play with the DH now. It sucks. I'm an, I'm a fucking National League guy. I don't know why my pitchers aren't hitting anymore. It sucks that pitchers are not hitting. I don't. It was always an out. It was always an inning killer for the other team and for yourself too sometimes. But I, we just I like playing that National League way. And now there's a science to it too. It just pisses me would... off, dude. Pisses me off. And now Degrom, who's our best pitcher for years now, is not even in the lineup the first year that he doesn't have to bat number one. And now we got a guy who's just as good as him. And it's like he's still not in the lineup. It's like, come on, man, get out of there, get get out there. You you make so much fucking money, and he's talking about going to arbitration at the end of the year like an asshole. And if he goes to arbitration, he's gonna probably leave because somebody's gonna fucking toss this guy. A... Listen, I already know who's going after him. It's either the Yankees or the fucking Dodgers, who's no this? doubt. Uh, Degrom, he he declared he's gonna go for you know he's gonna declare himself free agent and unrestricted too. So. Um, so it's not looking good, man. He's probably going to leave, you know, and, and the Yankees and the Dodgers will be the first two teams to offer him the moon, the stars, and the sun. Those are the ones that hurt the worst, too, are the, the homegrown talents because, you know, you watched him yep. through the minors. Yep. If, if, you, if you even pay attention we got to him. I'm just assuming, but Dude, yeah. we got him trading Beltron away at the end of his career for nothing. That's what we got DeGrom for, bro. So it's like now you're going to go and trade that away, you fucking idiots, but... Anyway, I got to get up and take a piss, uh, Drew, if you want to just uh, check out what's going on or whatever you want to do. I don't care. I'll be right yeah, back. Look up the chat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, with uh, with the Royals even, there was a lot of homegrown talents that we had. Or, or people oh, yeah, you guys, dude. Beltron was, dude, wasn't Beltron, Beltron your homegrown? Beltron was with us yeah, right? at one point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you guys sure. had a lot of homegrown good guys, bro. Well, and that was kind of how they built the thing. The thing the was, Yankees is treat you, you guys turn like, them into you turn them into stars, and how the fuck do you continue paying for? Dude, them? the Yankees the treat problem. mostly the Florida Marlins, who were the Florida Marlins, but mostly that franchise, and sometimes the Royals too. They the Yankees treat you guys like you're a minor league team. As soon as you get a guy that they're like, oh my god, look at this guy, he's a homegrown guy, and he's hitting fucking 120, you know, five RBIs a year and batting over 300, they're like, okay, we'd swoop in and offer him all kinds of money and steal him away. And they've done it so many fucking times to the Marlins, uh, to the Kansas City Royals, uh, to the fucking Oakland A's, to the Seattle Mariners. There's a couple of teams that get fucked as soon as their guys go good. Bang, they end up on the big boys somehow, you know? And the Mets were never that team to come in and swoop in and do that shit because they never had owners that would spend like a fucking Steinbrenner or, you know, some of these owners out there. But now they do because now we legit have the richest owner in the game. You know what I mean? And Cohen, this guy is fucking filthy and he's willing to spend. You know what I mean? Dude, this guy went and got that dude from fucking the Chicago Cubs last year. All right, that was unbelievable golden glove, awesome bat, batting over 300. The guy was fucking amazing. And they went out and just signed him, and they knew, you know, we probably won't be able to re-sign the guy, nor did we want to for some reason, because we have a bunch of guys in that position that um, are in the minors that are going to be really good. One of them, as a matter of fact, just came up this year for the Mets. And we just had that position filled, but we rented him. We basically paid this guy to rent him because we picked up his contract. The Mets spend frivolously now. They like the fucking Yankees, and now the Yankees don't spend. You know, you know, it would be hilarious if is someone like Elon Musk went and just bought one of the poorest teams in Major League Baseball. Dude, I swear, and just bought fucking everybody. Dude, you know what? I think Elon just Musk piss off all these other. I, that would teams. be fucking awesome, bro. And plus, I would make a movie out of that shit, like a rich Elon Musk type of guy, where he starts buying up everything because he just. And I'm telling you right now, I swear to God, I think Elon Musk just bought Twitter so he could turn around and just say whatever the fuck he wants because that's all he's doing now. He's saying whatever the fuck he wants. He's having. Fun. Fights with people and saying nasty shit to them. They're saying nasty shit back. Then he's saying some slick shit the next day. Then he's playing a joke the next day. Then he's and I think he bought it so he could be like, you know what? Now I get to do whatever the fuck I want. Nobody can but tell me anything. Thing. You know what but I mean? Like like you and I would, you know, buy a video. Game yeah, I swear to God. Yeah, that's fun. what this he's this doing with fucking game. Twitter. Yeah, and I think he'll do that with a major league baseball team next. He'll probably just be like, you know what? Or, or like a basketball team or a football team. You know what? I'm gonna buy them. And I'm going to see how it is to spend all the money in the world and get all the best players. 
Well, you know, like, he's, he'll do it to a sport that doesn't have a solid salary cap. Well, he like should buy the baseball. fucking Jets. He should buy the Jets. But you got salary caps. There's only buy so the Jets, fucking Eli, that. because you made Jets that land like nobody's ever done before. You buy the Jet, you motherfucker. All right, I'll be right back. All right. Uh, Ronald Boo says, Drew, that's basically Cohen. Yeah, but could you imagine having more of them in there? And then all of a sudden, you know, teams like the Yankees and the fucking Dodgers are actually having to uh, compete, you know, and not not constantly be at the top of fucking everything. Uh, let's see. Uh, Base Alcatraz, what's up, everyone? Celtics versus Bucks. What a crazy good game. Celtics did a good job taking control in the fourth. Nice. Yeah, enjoy the game, man. Yeah, but could you imagine having more of them? Oh, now I'm hearing myself. That's crazy. Uh, Scherzer is my favorite Met, says Ronald Booth. I, I couldn't tell you who all's on the Mets, but I, I've always uh, thought Scherzer was cool. Um, yeah, we were talking about Beltron earlier, and he uh, he started his major league career with the Royals, so it's uh, it's kind of funny that he ended his career with the um, the sign stealing scandal and shit. Everything kind of fucking come in full circle in a way, but um, you know, because the Astros and the Royals have had their uh, have had their moments, especially when it came to uh, the uh, World Series runs and such. Oh, let's see. Who else do we have in there? When Russia invaded Ukraine, this is Travis. I never would have thought that a Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial would overtake in the media. Incredible. Yeah, it's, uh, well, and, you know, it's distracting a lot of people in a way because, I mean, I was never fully, fully invested in the whole Russia-Ukraine thing. World politics, first of all, just aren't, aren't my thing they don't captivate me too much and um you know i do have several people i know that are from ukraine so you know it's uh to hear their stories is really upsetting so um but yeah i, I think it also came at a time where the russia ukraine stuff is just dying down i think people in general are getting tired of hearing about it and are just generally pissed overall about the whole scenario so why not throw a couple of dimwits from fucking hollywood into a into a trial you know uh awandi loves pussy it's really good to hear uh jean morant tonight really sucks let's see who else we got in here uh travis says afterwards the judge was like i've never seen anything like that before oh <laughs> well I, I'm not sure. I've, I've gone a little too far back. I think that's talking about the guy who was blowing snow, you want smoke fuck out of his the pussy. nose. Drew me, yeah. fuck the pussy. Oh, yeah, oh Wandy. Me, fuck the pussy. I want to fuck the pussy. I want to fuck the pussy. I want to fucking bomb the pussy. I want to bomb the pussy. Let me bow down and bomb the pussy. Let me trap bomb to chest in pussy. Yes, I bump in the pussy. I bump in the pussy. I bump on the grind. Watch all the time. Turbin is mine. I'm wearing it nice. Smell like pistol ice. Oh shit, right. Yeah. I went to turbin tonight to get down with the bomb. All right. Strap a bomb in my chest. Yes. Run into the store when it's all full of people in the store. Bob boom on his motherfucker. Cock sucker, really motherfucker. <laughs> Like a bomb on these motherfuckers. Drop a bomb on the motherfucker. I drop a bomb on these motherfucker. Run up to the side of your truck, motherfucker. Put a roadside bomb in this motherfucker. Yeah, me bombing motherfucker. Word to a Wandy. Kwandi. Kwandi. Um, yeah, Ronald Booth, fellow Met fan. Uh listen, we're good, but there's a lot of teams that are good this year, man. You know, not to get back on baseball's dick, but for a second, there are a lot of teams that are good this year, man. Like, really good. Yankees are good. Um, uh, what else? Who else was it? There's another team that has, like, we were the first one to 20 wins. Did you know that, Drew? Uh, it doesn't surprise me because you guys were at that point last week. The Yankees have hit 20, so have you guys. Uh, the a Dodgers, the Brewers, and the Angels are at 19. Uh, motherfuckers. First place, New York Mets, baby. First hey, place. the Royals have nine wins. We haven't hit 20 losses yet. So, Dude, there's yeah. a team with like 18 fucking losses, bro. Yeah. What the fuck? No, there's actually a team with 23. Jesus Christ, it's the Reds, bro. Is that what? Oh, my God, dude. Six and 20. Talk about tanking the fucking season already. Christ, we're not even in June yet, and these guys are fucking four, 45 games out of first place. 
I mean, oh, a, fuck. A, a solid month could put them back at 500, but I'm. Uh, it's going to have to be one solid month. I don't think they're set up to be a World Series team. Dude, anyway, that is so. just fucking. That's ridiculous. Like, you know, you're getting ready during fucking preseason. You're like, think we're going to have a pretty good team this year. You know what I'm saying, Jim? Think so, <laughs> man. We got the boys looking good. 23 losses later, they're like, how many wins we got? Yeah, we got four wins. And uh, how many losses? We got uh, 35 losses. The fuck is going on here? And they fire Barry Trotz. I was about to bring that up. They fire Barry fucking Trotz, the New York Islanders. The dumbest move you can make. And I have a fucking cup that I drink on this show quite frequently. And it's the GM of the New York Islanders. And his name is Lou Amarello. Maybe you heard of him. Little Lou Amarello. He used to be the devil's general manager when they won all those Stanley Cups with Brodor. Oh, Brodor. And all those guys. Brodor, another save. I used to imitate the, uh, the devil's announcer, Doc Emmerich, all the time when I was a kid. I used to be like, oh, bro, die. He was such a little squeaky fuck. But anyway, um, you know, and he was the GM of the Devils when they won all those cups. He he, he drafted Bro Dorm, I'm pretty sure, and a bunch of other great guys. But bottom line is he's well-known. He's very good. He was with Toronto a couple of seasons ago. He actually got Monaghan on that team and all these guys that are on that team. He, he drafted, I think, or brought there. Long story short, he's been our GM for like four years. He hired Barry Trotz. As soon as Barry won the cup with the fucking Washington Capitals, they didn't want to give him the money. Uh, you know, and Lou Amarillo said, here, we'll give you the money. He came over to the Islanders. As soon as he came over to the Islanders, they became instantly good. A contender, really. Because they've been in the conference finals the last two years in a row and lost to Tampa Bay. They took him to seven games last year, the Tampa Bay um team and that no one's ever even brought them to seven games yet during this whole stretch of their they've Stanley been in the Cups. playoffs every year since 2018 yeah and they've been in the playoffs for four three straight years the Islanders they missed it this year they had COVID throughout the season they played 17 straight games on the road or 13 straight games on the road a bunch of shit happened they go and fire a great coach one of the best of all time and you know he comes on today and he's like trust me uh, Lou Amarello, he's like, trust me, I know what this team needs. It needs fresh, new blood. And and listen, so you, you can't argue with this guy. Well, that's true. But you can't argue with this guy because when he was on the Devils, he would fire guys that make the playoffs. He fires coaches that make the playoffs. Go look up his track record. He's fired guys that have made the playoffs, bro. Have made it to the second round of the playoffs, matter of fact, I think. Um, so he's done this, and then he's won Stanley Cups after he's done that with the people that he hired after that. That everybody's like, oh, no. He's done it. He's shocked the world numerous times being a GM. So I trust in the guy. I'm pissed off that we got rid of Barry Trotz. It sucks to get rid of such a good guy. He's going to get calls right away and be a, a, a coach somewhere right away. Um, and then there's other great coaches that are out there too right now. But you know what? Who the fuck knows what's going to happen? All I know is it was a sad day. To lose that guy as a coach, man, it really was. It was stupid. It just was. I don't get it, but I gotta trust my GM. I don't know. That's you know this one kind of surprises me just from because I I knew we'd be talking about this tonight, so I looked a little bit into it and realized this guy is a playoff coach with the exception of this year. You don't rub it in, Drew. Where it, where? Well, no. Let me finish though. Like, give me a chance here. <sighs> it, but he missed it. You guys were the next spot in the playoffs. If there was one more spot allowed, it would have been the Islanders. Yeah. And it reminded me of what happened to Lovey Smith with the Bears. You remember this? Yes. And how he got so, fired and all that. Yeah. This guy had a ten and six record. And anyone who's paid attention to the NFL knows that if you don't make the playoffs with a 10 and 6 record it's by just some fluke of mathematics because 10 wins is a playoff team he had a 10 and 6 record they fired him the next day this is a guy who took the bears their first super bowl in over 20 years he took him to multiple playoff games they fire him and then what happens the next couple of years 8 and 8 5 and 11 3 and 13 6 and 10 under Tressman and Fox and they've gone through like four different coaches since then and it's like well you guys are fucking retards it took them another fucking yeah, but eight see, years or something to get back to the playoffs. But dude, but dude, let me tell you this, and, and that Lovey and this Levy was a solid coach. This makes ahead. it even worse. This makes it even worse because that guy wasn't a great coach yet, or or never was the guy that they fired. Right? They Who, fired Lovey or, or yeah, Charles? Lovey, right? Okay, okay, yeah. But well, Barry Trotz, Super Bowl. Barry Trotz is a great coach. He's a great. He's ranked like fucking in the top like seven or eight guys ever to to coach the game. You know what I mean? He's top 10, without a doubt. He's top 10. 
Well, no, I, and I get that. That would be like and firing they fired him. after a ten and seven. Yeah, season, it's right? fucking. I, I it, it's but... like the dumbest fucking thing. But like, but you know what? Like, if you go look up Lou Amarillo, like I said, if you look up his track record as a GM, he's done crazy, stupid shit like this, but it's paid off. And supposedly, this was the rumor floating around locally, which you hear it from everywhere over here. And they were saying how he was benching young guys and they weren't playing full time and and they were arguing during the regular season about like why are you benching so and so or why are you not playing him enough or why you got to push him more or you got to and it was like constantly a, a back and forth with the both of them uh, the GM and the coach so right. I don't fucking know man all I know is it sucks you know I mean Someone else may, will win him a cup with him now. Someone else will win a cup with him. Watch. Guarantee I, it. I get, I get what you're saying. I just, with Lovey Smith, yeah, he wasn't fucking Don Shula or Bear Bryant or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But he, he was like the best thing the uh, the Bears had seen since fucking Dicka, though. I mean, the Bears had Dicka. gone through years and you years of losing. Let me season. tell you Dick about Dicka. Dicka took him to one good season. Let me tell you about my Dicka, all right? <laughs> Let me tell you about my dickhead. The Bears over there, the Bears dot that over there with the Bears down over there for them over there. But that guy back over there told me that sometimes it's fucking windy over there. When those guys are down over there, you tell them to stop doing what they're doing over there because there's a reason for that water, the water, the way that the water is inside over there. And watch out for the wind. It's lots of windy cities and windy. You know, I never fucking realized that Clark W. Griswold is from Chicago. Yeah, he's got all the bear shit. Right? Yeah, dude. You never. Yeah, you're right. And then he got the. Did he have the Cubs? He had a no. He had a Chicago Blackhawks jersey on once. That's what I remembered from it, and the bear shit later on in other movies. But he had this Chicago Blackhawks jersey in one of those movies. I remember that. He's from Chi Town. You know what I mean? Yep. The Windy City. Um. Yeah, that that over there with uh, you know you want that on the brat or do you want that with the fucking mustache attached to it? You know the what bears. I mean. You want the fucking beers to come down here and help you with your fucking mustache? We'll have them chopping off like a fucking broom, like a fucking. And then if you do see, there's a slight little difference between that and the Boston people because Boston are like every uh they, 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 every uh. Yeah, they're right, they're right, they're right, they're right, uh, yeah, they're right. Do you remember that? Mm. <laughs> you remember when they were doing that nonstop? Every, uh, every, uh, four scores and every, uh, five what, years what, again. What, 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 what? I can't take this fucking commercial anymore. They got to stop playing this. Every time they go to a break when the puck goes out of play or they covered it and they're just, you know, going to a commercial break, they play that fucking commercial where the mascots sit down on the couch together and drink a cause light. And I want to pounce their head in with a bat because they play it constantly and it's getting annoying now. And I'm about to throw my microphone at the TV. Uh Uh-oh. Okay? And then that's it with the TV. It's gone. That's that's great. It's, It's gone after that. Now, fuck you. You know what, Tommy? It's don't don't start. What? Don't start. What's he calling again? He's like, you tell Drew to take that fucking belt and to shove it sideways up his candy ass. And I was like, dude, he took it to the fucking fair the other day, and he was showing it off. People were running up to him going, are you really the champ? And he's like... One thing uh, I'm not going to do is take this belt and put a bunch of black duct tape on it. Oh, and, uh, my. Oh, no. I can oh take no. a label printer from 1987 and stick a bunch of fake shit on it for a fake belt for a fake champion who does <sighs> fake videos. Oh, shit. Uh, why, why don't you go film another van video with Hamza there, Tommy? Uh, right? Tommy, I don't think you should call in, buddy. I just <laughs> don't think you should call in tonight, my friend. All right, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, kick, 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 kick. Mince me is gonna bite. Mince gets 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 Tommy. Tommy, stop I'm calling. I'm gonna go run around my downtown square with my belt. Oh, it's not the real Tommy. That was a fake Tommy, bro. I'm sorry. Somebody named themselves Tom. Oh my god. Dude. They were trying to get through. Yeah, trying to fuck with me. I don't think it's the real Tommy. Tom's a five thousand. The Tom's a five thousand. That's a that's a vacuum that was made into a suck machine. Never bother me while I'm vacuuming. 
don't ever bother me when if you hear the vacuum in here, don't ever bother me when I'm vacuuming. You stupid. Um, <laughs> I'm sitting here as we're talking. I'm thinking of that. Uh, the the Bill that, Swirsky super fans and Chris Farley having the heart attack after he got oh all the God. wings and shit. <laughs> Farley, Farley. You know, I'll tell you, Drew. Did you see that game the other night? <laughs> He's beating his chest. Hang on, I pulled my shit out. Dude, sure, dude, Scherzer is a motherfucking like. I always liked him from afar, you know. And I always said, and then when I saw he was on the Dodgers last year, I was like, oh fuck, he ended up on that team now. And they were like, oh, he's gonna resign here because he likes it and blah blah blah. He's undefeated, he, you know, he can't lose. All this shit. And then the Mets fucking come out out of left field because it wasn't even rumored that they were gonna get him. And they wind up n- nabbing this guy somehow. Washington Capitals, dude. You got to hand it to them. Going up against the number one ranked Florida Panthers. The fucking President's Trophy Florida Panthers. Right? Mm-hmm. And Washington, these fucks are leading this series three games to one. Oh, my God. Really? Wait a second. Wait a second. Florida scored with two minutes. Oh, my God. Florida scored with no time left. And then they won the game in overtime. Or did they? It says it's into the first on my screen. Wait a second. Nope, Florida won. Yeah, Florida won. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one here. Yeah, so Florida tied up the series. They oh my god, Washington was this close to taking a three one lead on them, bro. Holy shit. And Florida won. Two games of two. Yeah, Very two lucky. Two. You got Penguins three and uh, three to one after yeah. a seven two win. I'll tell you what's uh, going to happen with Flame that. Stars just started. Dallas is up two one. I'll tell you what's going to happen with that Rangers series. The Rangers are going to win the next game in the Garden. They're going to force a game six back in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's going to win that game and close out the series. Now I know Ranger fans are like, no, we hope that, but you know, we we win that next one in Pittsburgh. But I just don't see them winning two games in a row. The Rangers. So. You know, I'm going to give the Pittsburgh's going to take it, not next game, because the Rangers are going to be all up in arms at the Garden. They're going to be like, oh, they're going to come out flying. But then again, the Penguins scored seven fucking goals on these guys tonight. Seven goals. I take it um, in hockey, you're not as afraid as the fan of a team. You're not as afraid of a sweep as you would be in baseball, right? Can I tell you the Islanders have only been swept one time in their fucking history? Oh well, no. I mean, what I mean is, you don't. What you wouldn't be afraid of your team sweeping the other team in the playoffs, would you? In fear of your team getting too much rest, you well, would that, be more that, afraid of that in baseball. Dude, that right? happened with us with the Tampa Bay Lightning, bro. You know that you too much rest. Yeah, we we the first time we played them, I got my fucking nose will not stop itching here. Right <laughs> the first time we played them. All right, there, Amber Heard. Quit right, I'm doing ca- like she like went like this with her nose and shit. Um, I swear I got like something in my fucking nose or it's like something's like allergies and shit. Um, it is a season. It is man. And I hate like the dryness in the air, but anyway, and the pollen dude, I go outside and I start my car and I put up my windshield wipers and there's like a pound of fucking yellow dust. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yellow dust. And I'm like, Oh, that's great. Breathing that in all night with the fan on in the window. But, um, what was I saying again? We were talking about uh, when the Islanders got too much rest from Sweden. Yeah, the they played them the first time. All right, so we played them the last two years in the conference finals, right? The first year they beat us in six. The second year they beat us in seven. But that first year, we sat down because I think we swept the Penguins in the second round, and we were waiting to see who was going to win the Tampa series. And we all knew Tampa was going to win, but we played four games. We were done. And we literally sat down for a week waiting for them to, to finish up their series. And it and it took so long, man. And when it did, literally that first game they came out, they got blown the fuck out, bro. And they were known for defense, you know what I mean? And they got blown the fuck out. Their defense was horrible. And and you could tell, like, they can't sit. They're one of these teams that, you know, they just couldn't sit, you know? And I think it's bad for any team, and it really... Unless you're in the midst of, like, a long run and you get into the finals, right, by, like, a sweep or, like, you finish way before that other series, then right. maybe that's a good thing where you get a rest before you're in the finals. Maybe that's a good thing, right? 
I guess it depends on what ailments your team. You know, each scenario would yeah. be different too. If yeah. you're completely one hundred percent healthy, and it's just yeah. rest. If you're banged you don't up, want that's it. a great thing. If you're banged up and you're missing guys and you need a couple of days, man, that's a fucking blessing, right? But right. most of the time, it's a curse. It really is. Most of the time, if you sweep a team out, you know, most of the time you're like, fuck, we can't sit anymore. It's like these pitchers who, once they get up on the mound, they got to keep throwing. And if right. you they're, stop they're them. You know? like the starters are trained to five to six day cycles. So if they get a week off because of a sweep and then it's another three, four games before they actually start, you're talking 10, 11 days without pitching. Yeah. You would almost have to simulate a game on an off day for this guy. Yeah. So, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, you have to like. Yeah, you know how when they uh, simulate those games sometimes, like he's doing a simulated game this week because he has to throw because every week at, at, at this time he throws. It's like, stop this shit with your fucking arms, you know? Some of these guys <laughs> are like rubber bands. It's like, dude, stop. You you got a rubber band arm. You throw, like this guy who was pitching against the Mets the other day, dude, this guy was throwing a 100-mile-an-hour fucking fastball sliders, and I was like, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> I was like, damn, this dude could throw, bro. 100-mile-an-hour, bro. Every pitch. What was it? Was it Cespedes? It was hitting 107, 108 in some pitches. Dude, I don't, I don't know. It was the guy. The, well, the guy I'm talking about is the guy from the Phillies. He's, um, I think, their setup man, and he fucking is just a fireballer. The yeah, I'm, I'm trying to beach. remember who it was. What is the world record at this point? World, right, fastest MLB pitch ever yeah i think it was 107 right oh it was aroldis chapman that's who i'm thinking of 105 miles an hour oh 105 105.1 why was i thinking cesspitus that's weird well when you said cesspitus i know that the the the, you know the fielder cesspitus i don't know the pitcher unless i'm just totally making up a name i don't know dude what the fuck are you saying (laughs) dude i don't know um yeah, he, he, he's an outfielder. Why the fuck? Yeah, Cespedes. He retired. Yeah, he's a retired. Yeah, it must. I, the only thing I could say is it's the C in the name. I guess that's the only excuse I've got. He's a there. retired. Piece I know of who cheat. I was thinking of. He's a retired piece of cheat. Yeah. So anyway, Barry Trot's gone. It's a stunner, and he's gone, and it's just. I don't know. I guess we'll find out what the deal is, but who the fuck cares, right? Um, Rob Zombie. Doing another movie, another scary movie. Which one is he doing now? I guess. Let me see here. I just read Rob Zombie at it again with another scary movie. Oh, my God, dude. Is he really doing that? The Munsters? Yeah, dude. Like, what? Dude, really? He's doing... That's not even scary. Not the way he's been doing it. God, I, I just... Why? Why? Well, I mean, listen, if it's good, I, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, you're going to do Frankenstein, he's going to do, he's going to do fucking, you know, that's all right. Mm. I'll take it. And don't forget, if you're a Rocky fan, check out Rocky Four, the remastered version, because uh, Sylvester Stallone re-edited the whole entire movie, used footage that he didn't use the first time around, got rid of stuff that was in the original and oh, change it a, up like a director's cut yeah man he changed it up he got rid of some shit that he never noticed from the first film he like uh switched it up a little bit to, like the feel of the movie and everything everything's switched up now man and some people say it's actually better you know what i mean really yeah some I mean, people it's, say it's ac- actually better but i, I haven't seen the it story yet. and the uh soundtrack that's my favorite of the series to yeah. be fair, I haven't seen either of the Creeds, but yeah, as far as the original yeah, series Yeah, you know goes. what? I saw the first Creed. I didn't see the second one. It lost me after the Creed movie, you know? And it lost me on the Creed movie a little bit. Balboa, I checked out. Remember the one It was Balboa? It was like the first one. Oh, where yeah, he, the one from like the mid-2000s where he came out of retirement, did the whole fucking and Randy son was, field thing. Yeah, yeah. He, and his son was around, like, and, yeah. you know... And, um, and then he started Adrian like was dead. He yeah, and he was hanging out with that chick that was a little kid back in the day in the neighborhood, mm-hmm. right? And then her son winded up being like in his corner. Do you remember that one? Mm-hmm. That's Balboa, right? I think. I think that one's yeah, called the, yeah, Balboa. You got the right one, yeah, because uh, Marie was the the kid from the childhood. And then the one after that was like, 
What was the one after that? It was like Rocky Balboa, the next one, or some shit. That no, 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 like... no. Rocky Balboa was. It was. It, it would be basically Rocky Six. So Rocky Five came out in what 1990, yeah, and then yeah, Rocky yeah. Balboa would be the equivalent to Rocky Six. That was like oh five, oh six, and then after okay. that it was the Creeds. I don't think. Okay, all right. So there's been two Creeds after that, right? Right. All right. So all right, because I thought he did another one where he was fighting again, or like was training somebody. Yeah, well, the first Creed he was doing that, and the second one, it, doesn't he take more of like a Pauly, you know, is doesn't he kind of slide into the role of Pauly for those two movies? What does he do in the second Creed, really? I don't know. I haven't seen him. Yeah, I got to go see that movie. I, wonder I, mean, I, I did like go. Rocky Balboa. I like to call it Rocky Six because it seems to make more sense <laughs> if you're talking about in the lineage. Did you watch but, wrestling on all this weekend? No, I, fuck, I no. I watched a little bit of the... Uh, WrestleMania uh, aftermath, basically. It's backlash, like, the, yeah. yeah, it's like they're, it's like they're, you know, backlash from WrestleMania now. Like they're tying the whole WrestleMania thing into it. Like, you know, it's officially the, you know, yeah. It, instead of just calling it backlash when we just knew it was the uh, follow up or you yeah, know, and it's always premiere, been, if you will. I mean, it's always been backlash, and now all of a sudden it's you know, WrestleMania backlash, I, and McMahon's like, notice. McMahon's like, if you don't say. WrestleMania backlash. I'm gonna fucking fire you because he, you know, he wants you to say WrestleMania backlash, and if you don't say it the right way, and you're like, "Welcome to backlash," they're like, "All right, find them, find them, find them right now." Does he really think that having the word WrestleMania in it's gonna make? Well, somebody made that decision. Somebody made that decision, and we're like, "Yeah, if we put the word WrestleMania in there." Like, well, if you're uh, going to do that, how about you make the card more than one title match and more than six matches? So when I looked at the card, I'm like, there's only one title match. And it wasn't even Reigns. Yeah, right? Because they were in like the, the uh, they were in a, uh, a, a tag team uh, shit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know, man. That is weird. I don't know. Like, it, there was it, only it, one title defense. That's it. I, I don't follow wrestling enough to understand what storylines they're at right now, but. I look at the matches and I'm like, this is what you're putting the word WrestleMania before? Yeah. I mean, I know it's not meant to be WrestleMania. I get that. But this is the follow-up to WrestleMania. This yeah, is the show sad, after dude. WrestleMania. And Cody versus Seth. Rollins. I like that. I like the Cody. But I watched that a little bit. Um, Edge versus AJ. I get I that. I like that, too. Where, where's... Where's the uh, other than Rousey and Flair for the for I the like women's that title? Too. Where's that was the... a good match, bro. I'm telling you, they put on a good show. Those two. Oh, where were where were either the tag titles, the other women's title? You, you got your world champion. Wanda and Rousey. Thing. Wanda uh, arouses me. Wanda Rousey. Would you uh, bang Wanda Rousey? Yeah. Yeah, you would, right? I hear she's a freak. But if you, uh, yeah, really? Was she uh, her? I could her see her ritual, totally. Her ritual before her UFC fights was to have sex. Dude, I could see her totally wearing like nothing but her like you know UFC like training, uh, um, UFC training uh, shoes and socks, and then just being totally butt naked, nothing else on but the socks and the shoes, and her squatting over you like, yeah, you want to fuck? And she's like <laughs> doing one of those to you, Drew. She could be a, a freak like that, bro. Where she's like, you want to see fuck? I'm gonna fuck you. Oh shit, Wanda. She's like, grab my fucking chest. And you're like, whoa. And she's like, I ain't got no debt. You're like, I know. <laughs> kind of small. They are small titties, though, aren't they? On her? Oh, they're not huge by any means. Kind of like they live really small, dude. They are really. I heard. Well, I mean, maybe they're a little bit. I don't know. I can't really tell when she comes out because she's always wearing like a cloak or a fucking. You know, she's never looking hot. Well, maybe you if know. I don't type bobs and I type boobs, I'll actually get what I'm looking for here. I heard All about right. the I heard about the female wrestlers that they said you got to look more hotter out there to the female wrestlers recently. WWE, did you know that? Really? Because yeah, I, I saw that in a fucking thing. Getting away from that. Well, apparently look, somebody said they it look to average them. to a little bit on the small side, just from what I'm seeing. Or oh, so? Oh no, that's what it was. It was in. Um, it was in the uh, that minor uh, wrestling thing that they have WWE. The one that what's his name NXT. used to run? Yeah, that uh, Triple H used to run or some shit. That f that female was saying. I saw an interview with her where she was like saying something about like when um 
when uh, Triple H left, it got crazy or something more weird. Well, I mean, he had that thing running pretty well. Yeah, why would they just take the take that from him unless he was, you know, sick and lost it? Is that what happened? He, like he got sick and had to leave that, or it was because he just they just took him off of it? Um, I mean, he retired from wrestling. I again, I don't follow enough. To well, know no, he doesn't have to wrestle to run that. I mean, he could. No, run, I know, you know. I know, but maybe. I mean, you could be onto something. That maybe his health in general. They were like, you know, let's just move that over to whoever. This bitch would rather shoot herself and kill herself than to go than to go to jail because she tried to. Like, what did you think was going to happen? What did you think was going to happen, lady? Did you think that you were going to escape forever with your man from jail? That you were like, I love you so much, I got to fucking bust you out of jail. And we got to run away together. Like As love will make you do crazy things, and, man. Yeah, whether... I mean, I guess so. But like, you know, what kind of life did you think you were gonna live? And then she winds up just fucking offing herself anyway. It's like, you know what I mean? It just Didn't makes her head on straight. If you ask me, I think it's that's fucking what a story, simple man. Simple but unfortunate. Now, if they if they make this movie, I want to see the guy, um, what's his name from the Office, play the dude. Uh, Steve Carell. No, the other guy from the office play him. Um, his friend, what's his name in that? Who's going out with Pam? Um, what the fuck was his name? He's the guy who plays Fantastic Four now. Oh, um, Chris. Fucking. What the fuck's his name? Chris. Uh, son of a bitch. Oh shit! I don't know the guy's name from a hole in the wall, though. But let me see if I got it in here. Um, what the fuck is his name? There are more than sixty people in the cast of The Office. Here are the first three: Steve Carell, John Krasinski, and Rain Wilson. Krasinski. Krasinski. Oh. John Krasinski can play the guy because he looks like him to me. I guess they do. Yeah, now I see it. Yeah. You know, and then the blonde chick, that'll be played by, you ready for this? She will be played by the chick who just lost a lot of weight that was really fat, the, the blonde chick from England. Oh, Adele? No, you sicko. Not Adele. <laughs> the other, the chick who's an actress and she's been in all kinds of funny movies and she's like in comedies all the time and she was huge at one point and now she lost a ton of fucking weight. And she's blonde, all blonde, and pretty hot now. Do you know uh, what I'm talking about? Really? You don't know? Wow. I forget uh, her name. Let's go I with name, um, anyway. Rebel Wilson. I don't know. Who's that? What movie is she in? Let me see what she looks like. Rebel Wilson. Yep, that's her. Rebel Wilson will play her. So the guy from the office plays him. Rebel Wilson plays her. Yeah, right. she lost a lot of weight, that chick, dude. Did you see her lately? I am now. Yeah. I didn't she know she had lost the weight, though. Yeah, so that's why it was like, I don't know who you're talking look over about. Here. I was trying to just look think o- of fat chicks. Look over here. Look at this. Look. What movie is that from? But anyway, look. You see it on the screen? Yeah. There she is. Looking lean, mean. Like a fuck machine. She lost some and she's, tonnage. She's got the money to trim off the the fat flabs too. Yep, she even looks better in the old uh, Phenonigan. Look at that. Kind of got for the most. Yo, she's got the you... lips that would work perfect for that chick that just got killed. Look. <laughs> she's got fish lips. Look. Right. Yeah. I could do it. I'll put on more weight if you want me to. I'll fucking gobble cock constantly, so I'll put on cock weight. If you want me to, I'll keep eating and sucking on it all night fucking long until you <laughs> fall in a car and fill my body with it and put weight inside me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not funny. You're not laughing. You're not my mom or my dad, and I don't want nothing to do with you. <laughs> what movies has she been in that's bloody been worth a day? I can bloody fuck you. I'm going to fucking bloody bulky blacky fucking london fucking blokey fuck yeah um she was in like um 
What was it again? That Bridesmaids, song. A Few Best Men, she Bogan was in, Pride. Uh, that, 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 that movie that What's-His-Name made where they're neighbors and they fought, and then they go against the, CR, um, the sorority. You know that movie? Uh, Bridesmaids? No. <laughs> the movie where... Uh, I'm going through the list. What's that guy's name? Uh, Sith? Uh, Sith? Sis? Sith? Um, what's his name that lasts You're really about weird? Seth Rogen? Yeah, Seth, the guy who laughs really weird. Yeah. Right? Uh, you know the movie that he made, Neighbors, where like these people move in next door and it's a sor- it's a sorority? Well, part one is like where it's uh, all guys, and then part two, it's all chicks. I think she was in that part two movie one. That was pretty funny. And then she was in something else where I remember her just taking a fucking... A fucking hacksaw Jim Duggan blow to the forehead with a fucking two by four. What? Yeah, I remember her just getting smashed with a two by four in the movie somehow, and she was like, "It fucking hurts over here." Or something I'm, just, like I'm that. looking at most of these movies, and I'm like, "These aren't movies I would probably watch anyway." No? It's like Bridesmaids, Bachelorette, Pitch Perfect. It's like, what are these movies? It's all fucking Chick porn. Flicks. It's all porn, bro. No. Yeah. No. Imagine that. She was in a night at the museum. Uh, That's secret. where I remember her from too. Yeah, she was the security guard. Yeah, I remember Tilly. that. She was in. Yeah, she was in that. Yeah, I forgot about hmm. that. I mean, I, I know of her. I've seen her. I know who she is, but I just couldn't recall any movies I've actually seen her in. Well, you know what? Right, there we go. Now you can jerk off to her, all right? Yeah, we'll see. Now you can bang one out. I find her. something better. Uh, well, it's not too much better, but uh. No, really? <laughs> Than that? <laughs> She's kind of hot. No, there's much better. I like. I I can name someone right now to you that you. Yeah, but I'm really into the wrestling chicks. You know what I mean? It's my weakness. Is uh, I mean, some of them are. You know, I, I think I just were... love wrestling chicks. Their bodies are so unique, and they just have like built up like certain areas that are built up more than others. Um, not all wrestling chicks, obviously, because there are some fucking nastified bitches out there. I was going to say, now, you can't but, say all of them. No. But um, uh, tennis, female tennis players, like, they are, like, a love of my life, too. I've always loved female tennis players, especially the Russian ones. They've always been a friendly little thing that I like. A little I fetish. had a roommate who uh, dated Anna Kavrunikova for a while. Anna Kavrunikova? Really? Not that she was ever huge. She she had kind of the Danica Patrick thing going on. She was so hot that she was popular because of that, not because of her actual Anna ability Conicola. to play. I want to, man, th- what, what was the name of that chick? Was it that girl that you just mentioned? What was the one that was in the early, no, like the mid-2000s? She was like, no, the early 2000s. Blonde Russian? Yeah. Yeah, that was Kavernikova. Okay. I mean, yeah. there may have been another, but, I mean. Yeah, she, she was hot. For that. She was just. So this would have been. He would have dated her like in 0102, like right when she was getting her uh, sausage start or whatever. Oh. But I, I, I don't know when she exactly started. I guess she turned pro in 95. So Anna got she been at it for a while. Baby. Anna got a canona. I got to get a drink. I'll be right back. All right. In a con, I go feed. But uh, yeah, so yeah, he had. Uh, Dated Kavernikova. I was going to look at the female roster right now. Who all's. I love female so Alexa, wrestlers, Drew. I'm trying to find ones like Dana Brooke doesn't do anything do have, for me. Do you have a, a favorite like of all time and do you have a current? All time would be probably Lita. Lita or Mickey James. But as far as current, I've got to kind of run through it here and see who there is. I like Kinte Kunte. Um, well, shit. Maybe it's uh, going through the list. Probably Ronda Rousey. Let me see who's on NXT, just to be fair. But make sure I'm not missing anyone from there. But do 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 do. Mandy Rose is the only one I really know there. Shit, that's a bunch of people I've never heard of in NXT. But, again, shows how much I uh, pay attention now. Bailey has a torn ACL. Well, that'll, uh, that'll put you on the inactive list. But, yeah, so I guess it'd probably be Rousey 
as far as the current roster goes, her or Becky Lynch. All time would be Lita or Mickey James. Yeah, that kind of puts that in perspective. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Colonel Mustard here. Colonel Look at the girls Mustard. At NXT right now, says Aaron. What? Electra. Electra Lopez. So he's wanting me to look a little closer at the NXT girls, even though I don't know. Look up them. America Sanchez or Chavez. Um, America Chavez. That's not even pulling up for me. Do you know who, who that did he is? say? Electra Lopez. They don't even have a Wikipedia profile for her. Electra right, Lopez. Me... He said. Electra Lopez. Let's see. It's about like Electra and the American Gladiators. Electra Lopez. Oh, shit. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Electra Lopez. Damn, have another lip injection. She's at maximum capacity on those lips. She's like this, look. (laughs) Hey, baby, you asked for Lopez, you got her. Yeah. Oh, my titties fell on you like this, yo. Yeah. We dancing. We dancing all around with her. She got it. She got that, 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 that. Nikita Lyons, they were saying in the chat. She looks... Nikita who? Nikita, you never know. Nikita Lyons. Nikita, no, no, the no. first picture I pulled up, she looked like a young Tamina. Nikita, but now she looks... Nikita, you know, no, never she... know. What's the looks name? Like Nikita she... Lyons? Nikita Lyons with two Ks. Nikita Lyons. She looks like she needs a pound of makeup just to go outside the uh, locker room. Nikita Lyons. Oh my lord. <gasps> um, yeah, this is kind of up my alley a little bit. Is it really? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Let's see. I'm looking up this America Chavez that you mentioned. It's a fucking kid from Marvel Comics. Yeah, that's the one who's in the new uh, movie. Oh. The character. I was like, the character is the only character. I, we were talking about hot well, listen. from wrestling. Well, no, I'm just saying, because the name that he said was almost the same name as what you were saying. Oh, I gotcha. But listen, that character is the only character in Marvel, right, that can jump dimension to dimension. Okay. Isn't that sick? That's, uh, that'd be a power worth having. Yeah. Fuck yeah. How about freezing time or being able to alter time? Well, that's the Infinity Stones, right? I don't know. I've, I, I've just I've thought about what would be like the power yeah. you would want. The Infinity Stones control that. People think about flying or swimming or things of that nature, but... If you like, could have man, one if superpower, you can stop time at any time you want. All you right. Well, if you could theoretically have, never die. If you could have one, what would it be? I mean, the ability to stop and rewind or fast forward time. What if you only well, had one only choice? Like a bullet to the back of the head. Yeah, but what if you only had one vessel. choice that you could stop time if you want and pause it, or let it go? It's up to you. But that's the only thing you could do. I guess pausing time would be the thing I'd want because the past you don't want to fuck with because of the whole butterfly effect. 
the future can always be so, altered. So anyways. if you pause time, that means you can move around and no one else can, but you could pause time. That means you're not growing old at all. So you can. Well, but I, neither I would are they. say, neither are they. I would say, I mean, if you kept time paused forever, what the fuck are you going to do with it? Well, not you forever. So you maybe pause once, it for like once certain in a while. intervals, like you get yeah. in a situation, you pause it, maybe turn someone around the other direction or yeah, exactly. punch someone in the face or leave and somewhere unpause. or go in and, and, you know, uh, fix the, uh, lottery, something like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. And if you partner up with the right person, you could be virtually unstoppable. That's like that movie. That's like that movie that came out years ago with the um, controller, TV controller. Are you talking about the Adam Sandler movie? Click? Click, yeah, it was one of them. Then there was another one where this kid was able to, like, I think fast forward and rewind time and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I, gosh, I saw Click, Jesus, probably 20 years ago. I mean, how old is that fucking Is that how old it is now? Oh, it had to be something like that. It's uh, it's well, been a see. while. Let's I'm see sure still... when Click came out. Let's see. When did the movie Click come out? 2006. There it is. Yeah, June 23rd, 2006. Um, yo, that other wrestler that they said that was the hottest one so far tonight. Gotta say. Yeah, the the Nikita. Yeah. It seems like you're getting mixed uh, mixed reactions here. Well, wow. Talvish says Nikita Lyons is thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> yeah, she is, bro. She is a thick bitch, bro. I guess Seriously. if that's your thing, yeah. You know, one movie that uh, we, we were talking about movies a minute ago, one movie that really caught my attention here, and this would have been about 20 years ago also, was Matthew McConaughey, Ed TV. Remember yeah, that, that was one? that was ahead of its time, man. It it really was because yeah. now you see people doing IRL streams and shit. Yep. Except his was twenty four seven TV on a television channel, and he never got a break. And it, it well, that was also like Truman Show. Fucking, yeah. You know, it was like a different version of Truman Show. You know, it was like the real life version of it. Right. Let me pull that back up. That that was a movie I watched. Uh, Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. That was Ed TV back then. Ed TV, yeah. Boy, that was a flop too. They spent eighty million on that and only got thirty five back. Damn. Had quite the cast though. Woody Harrelson. It was too early. It, it was too early for its time, bro. You know. I remember talking to some friends about it. and They were like, "It, I just, I don't get it. It's just, it's, it doesn't make sense, or it was just too much." And I'm like, "This is the future." Though. I bet you. And I, yeah. I saw it then. I bet you watch that movie now, and it just means something totally different. You know. Mm-hmm. That's definite. Bon Jovi had a good song on there. It wasn't very popular. Uh, if someone wants to look up real life and discover a Bon Jovi song you probably never heard before, that was a pretty good one. What was but it? Real life. Oh, really? That was, uh, yeah, probably the only song of any notability that came out of that. And I, I don't even think it hardly charted at all, but... um. Yeah, that was uh, it's one of those movies, you know, you go back and you, it's never became like a cult classic or anything, but it's one of those that could have at a time, you know, because it flopped, you know, the typical cult classic thing where it flops yeah. and then 10, 20 years later it gets rediscovered, yep. off, you know, or yeah. Office Space, which it was only a few years, but it got rediscovered. I love it that became movie. a thing. We we quoted the fuck out of that movie. We can oh, go through our entire day and not say anything but office space clips. I need my staplers. <laughs> I was Dave promised a piece of cake. A I was promised a piece of cake. I did not receive my check. Flair. Yeah. Oh, I the, was uh, just gonna say Flair, bro. Was I was wear. just gonna say that you fuck. You beat me to it. <laughs> you don't have. It. The appropriate amount of flair, right? I see. I can't oh, yeah. Dude, her boss at the at the basically, which was like her Fridays or a Chili's, mm-hmm. and her boss was such a lame fuck, dude. What don't you want to exp- Don't you want to express yourself? Yeah, I want to express myself all over your face. And of course, there was a guy named Drew in that show, so I everyone would tell me I was the guy with the O face. <laughs> yeah, look at my O face. Oh, oh, head on, apply directly to the forehead. Literally. I'm going to look up some of these quotes. 
I, I can't believe I've forgotten all of them after all these years. What are some of these fucking things? <laughs> Corporate accounts payable. Nina speaking. Just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was told that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable volume from 9 to 11. We're going to need you to take care of those TPS uh, reports. Oh, the fucking fax machine. The TPS reports. TPS reports. PCS load letter. What the fuck's that mean? <laughs> Peter, what is it uh, you say you do here? Uh, nothing. <laughs> oh, it looks like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> You know what I love watching on uh, YouTube? The guys who actually go to the filming um, locations. And like show different you... cities where films were. Yeah, like different. Like they'll show you where uh, the, the the one I'm talking about is where they show you office space where his company was. Mm-hmm. The buildings still exist, you know, and he like takes you there and he takes you to tchotchkes. You know, this was filmed here. You know, that part was filmed here. Mm-hmm. I love that shit. You ever heard of Adam the Woo? Who? Adam the Woo. Adam the Woo, no. The Woo. I don't think so. Adam the Woo. He does a lot of shit like film locations, Disney, and all that shit. And, oh, like um, a YouTuber or something? Yeah, yeah. Has he gone to uh, Albuquerque for uh, Breaking Bad? Dude, he's been everywhere. So the everywhere. Breaking Bad one would be pr- pretty cool. Have you heard the uh, woman who owns uh, the White's house? Uh she she's basically like she just like hates the world and everything because really? people constantly are throwing pizzas on her roof i can imagine <laughs> and uh you know standing outside taking pictures and i guess she's uh just not too happy about it obviously yeah. i mean how can you be you know yeah but then move if you don't like it right yeah yeah i mean hell you could probably make could have made a lot of money off that house if she would have sold it in the first couple of years yeah so that means every single day that you see me, that's on the worst day of my life. Well, dude, they <laughs> say that about the Amityville Horror House, which is like two towns over from me. And this is what they said about that first family that lived there after the murders. Because there's no question those murders happened, right? But right. they say that the second family that went in there to live basically lied about seeing ghosts and possessed and all that shit just to try to sell the house for more money or to make some kind of news coverage for them to like make money off of but the family claims hell no i almost murdered my entire family with an axe and something took over my body something took over me and almost made me kill my entire family till i got them the fuck out of that house and whatever is in that house is evil and possessed and fucked up and don't go live there and then Wasn't one of the sequels about that? Family, yes, though? yes, and yeah. that sequel is real. All right, no, the the first one was about that. Right, was about that family moving in there after those murders took place there. You know, or 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 the first one was. I'm not sure because I don't remember. They were so long ago. These movies, but I know that the original story was this dude who lived there hacked up his whole family without a doubt. Right, that it happened was about the Bloods family. Yeah, and I think that that first movie was about what happened. Or they showed that at the beginning of the first movie. Mm -hmm. And then how that new family moved in with kids and the brother and how the brother almost murdered the entire family or did some weird shit. I don't know. I forgot what they did in the movie, but the real life shit was fucked up to begin with, too. Because he went to a bar after he hacked up his entire family and fucking hung out and drank with these guys before he told them, hey, uh, I think something happened to my family and... uh, you know, something happened to yeah, he tried denying it and like setting it up that it was a hitman that did it. And they're like, oh, really? A hitman slaughtered your entire family and just left you alone? But anyway. Yeah, but. So they why ch- was the movie, the original movie, why why was it so negatively looked at? Like it earned a bunch of like, what, what do they call those? The raspberries or. Did it really? Because dude, or whatever those are called. I don't know why it would like not win. Like I mean, because like it was a scary, fucked up fucking movie. Well, in scary movies, especially back in the seventies, weren't necessarily expected to be the 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 best put together, you know, CGI, yeah, yeah. you know, and all that shit back yeah. then. Yeah. So I don't know why people, uh, it, unless it told the story not well enough, and it's been so long since I've seen that. You know, I know this the. the real story more than i do the hollywood version but 
Um, yeah. I know the real version like way better than the Hollywood version. Yeah, because I like I I. Well, you're not too far from it. Yeah, in and I've terms looked into of the world. It. Yeah, and I've seen the paper reports on it. Like I don't remember when it happened, but I've seen all the shit like over the years, and there's a lot of it. If you go look it up on YouTube and shit, there's a lot. I say in terms of the world, hell, you're not too far from it in terms of the fucking city you live in, to be honest. Uh, like one time, like like two towns over. <laughs> right. Fuck that. I realized that when I said it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, compared to the rest of the world, sure. But compared to the rest of the city, you're pretty fucking close. Yeah, dude. And I've I've been around that house. Like, that was one of the first things you do on Long Island when you get your license is, yo, let's go drive past Amityville Horror House with your friends. And we did that as kids, like, drive past there. And even just driving past it, you would get, like, all fucked up because those windows were are still there. They're still mm-hmm. there. The, the ones that look like fucking eyes. Yeah, they're still mm-hmm. there. You know, the one, uh, the one that I drive by a lot, well, and there's multiple ones, but it was the BTK killer's victims, uh, Dennis Rader, because all those happen in uh, Wichita. Oh, and, shit. you know, you, you hear me talk about going down there quite a bit every month or two. And, uh, yeah, one of them is is a street that I drive down commonly. And that was the one where the uh, Otero family was killed. The very oh, maybe first they're not maybe they're not still there. I think they might have gotten rid of the, those uh, windows and like changed the house around a little bit because I think people were going there and fucking around too much. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but, yeah, it's it's pretty fucked up. Uh, that whole thing and for years that windows those windows were there and it was scary it really was and like people a lot of people swore that that house was possessed you know right but well, now, I mean anywhere where a murder or suicide or something happens the first thing people go to is is it haunted or whatever they have to disclose that oh, if yeah, you're gonna yeah. buy the house they have to tell you if someone died in like it like they did with your house yeah yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> you know how they told you how, you know, a family of six was slaughtered in the upstairs uh, master bedroom. No, fortunately, and you were like, no one hey. died in the house, but there were a couple people who died while living in this house, one of which, you know, ate the barrel of a shotgun down the street. Oh, my but God. At least she didn't do it here. Wait, what? Why down the street? I never told you that. No. I swear I told you this like a month ago. You might have, but wait, she, she, yeah, I think you did. You did. The, but... the, the husband had Lou Gehrig's. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. And now he would, but he wasn't like fully there yet. So he was still teaching up the library and shit, like, you know, weekend yeah. classes or whatever, or evening classes. And she was fucking nutty wackadoo to begin with. And then dealing with, you know, helping him and shit. Yeah. She, I guess, didn't have the heart to kill him, but went to the fucking parking lot of the library while she was teaching the class and stuck the fucking shotgun in her mouth and pulled the trigger. God, man, that's fucking horrible, dude. But I always tell the story, like, when we're in the kitchen, you know, someone new to the house, is, we're talking and everything. Oh, yeah, you, bitch killed herself right here. Uh, <laughs> where are you standing? <laughs> you get right somebody there, people, like, knees. jerk and move where they're standing. She walked right into this here kitchen and just, no. That's fucking. Either way, I, I can't. You see even... that spot on the wall? We left that one uh, there just so there was a memory of. Her. <laughs> Jesus. But no, yeah the the BTK shit. It's. Uh, I remember uh, what was it, like three four years ago we were doing a show on him and I, I was you know going back through the research and that and I was actually looking at where each of these houses were and I'm like yep driven past that one yep I know exactly huh. what house that is I'm like holy shit man yeah. I'd love to go take a tour across the U.S. and go to those, like, uh, all the sites, filming sites and all that shit. That'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we've we've had a few filming sites here. Nothing major, not like blockbuster movie or anything, but there's definitely been some, you know, movies that have, you know, hit the big screen. Well, that, that, that uh, latest... In this area. And I know you live, obviously, in there. Yeah, like well, the latest movie that I've been around was that one from The Irishman. Mm-hmm. That was filmed, like, all up in my area. All, yeah. Like a lot of it was. A lot of it's uh, a lot of these uh, TV shows, especially will go to Georgia because the filming taxes and shit are a lot cheaper. And these movie studios will go down to Georgia. And you even see, like, if you see at the end of a TV show or a movie, it says uh, made in Georgia or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Georgia gets a lot. Beach. Yeah. They got a lot of recording that goes on there. A lot. Because it's it's immensely cheaper. Uh, Little just, people, it's got to be able to fit your film. You can't necessarily film Little, a snowboarding hey. movie. Little up people in Georgia. Little people, Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? 
Everybody's dying on that show now, dude. Everyone's like, God, I feel bad for them. Everybody's fucking... So is that like the new hot show to be watching right now or something? Because I know nah, you've talked about nah, it. Nah, I mean, it's not like a new hot show, but a lot of people do watch that shit, believe it or not. Yeah. Little People. Is that, and it's called Little People? Yeah, it's Little People Atlanta, Little People LA, Little People Texas. Oh, so they're doing like the Real Housewives, but with Little People? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, like, dude, they have these little Asian twins, and they shake their ass in the club in Atlanta, and that's what they get play, paid for. And oh, I found it. Little People Big World. Yeah, Little People Big TLC. World. TLC. You don't forget TLC. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what are each so each season's in a different city or something? Yeah, little people in LA, <laughs> little people New York. They ain't never did no little people New York. They ain't gonna do that shit. What are the difference? I'm trying to find them here. Where the different cities little people are. Black so, Mountain? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy would be like, and Tommy I want to be, be the on the show. And they're like, you're not a little person, Tommy. He's like, I can get on my knees. And they're like, no, that don't count. I demand channels. I demand to be on channels. it. If there's a show coming to Black Mountain, I better be on that fucking show. Damn, Tommy. I fucking better. It's for little people, bro. I don't care. You get me on that fucking thing, and you get me. He's telling his agent, and you get me on it now. But Tommy, it, it, it's it's for little people, bro. It's it's little people. I actually have to pee also. Well, no, I said it's for little people, not that you have to pee. It's for little people. I, I would. Tommy, come on, man. Go suck a fucking dick and eat cock. I think if they went to Black Mountain, I think he should be on that show, and he could be like the PT Barnum or something for them. It all he has to do is dress like himself, and he would fit right in as like the fucking ringleader of the cult. Get the puck out of here, dude! Get the puck out of here! Get the puck out of here! Sex. Do 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 do. do. That, that could be the theme song. I will bend for you. Just do the, uh, uh, what is it, the entrance of the gladiators or whatever they call it? Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. I think that would be a great city because that city has dealt with Tommy for so long. Why not just have a horde of midgets go running through that city? I, th I think they, they, no I one know. would probably bat an eye because they'd be like, oh, what's Tommy up to now? Because he'd be the one in the front of the line leading him through with his fucking hat on. Uh -oh. and his, <laughs> you get him a cane or whatever. <laughs> He's got like fucking 12 wee man behind him. You get Tommy mad. <laughs> Let's go to the cafe. You're guys. getting Tommy mad, bro. Is he, is he calling again? Tommy? Motherfucker! Tommy, hello? Hello, hello. Tommy's trying to fucking go. Hello, hello. Tommy, go. Motherfucker! James Worley did it. He fucking did it! So, no, there's not Joe Dope too. Me and my two coaches. Mm-hmm. So, no, there's not Joe Dope. You know, I just actually looked it up. They are getting ready to have one in Black Mountain, and I actually just put you a picture of the season premiere trailer photo with Tommy actually as the ringleader of the little people. 
What? You see that there? It's it's in the Skype chat. <laughs> oh no! Let me see. Hold on. They're, they're actually coming to Black Mountain, and he's going to be the ringleader. And I guess in the season premiere, they kind of roughed him up a bit, and he, he had to go, he had to uh, do what he had to do and, you know, take off because they were not too happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm telling you, that would that is how you get Tommy popular on television. You have him be the ringleader of the little people in Black. It'll Mountain. be fucking chasing him. It would be a hit. I got a YouTube. <laughs> the first thing he'd do, he uh, he'd be talking to little people. Now I know the ropes. <laughs> are I've got a YouTube Kay? channel. Kay? I was Kay? on the Kay? Joe Cronin Kay? show for years, and all of them are on their phones it's looking up package. all the fucking people he's worked with. It's a big package. <laughs> it's a big package. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big package. <laughs> Fucking Tommy, look at him. I'm running through Black Mountain tearing ass. Why? This fucking midget's after me. Somehow I'm naked. You're naked? No, I got a white t-shirt and boxers on. But I'm running. Pick me up. Keep running till I get to you. These midgets won't let me go. Oh, no, <laughs> bro. <laughs> He's going to be so mad. The black ones look pissed. The black one looks real mad. Why? I called him the N-word. Oh, Tommy. Come on, Tommy. <laughs> Fucking moron. What do you Latino think? Pete says that guy was, uh, that Preston Lacey is too skinny to be Tommy. <laughs> The first thing I thought was that fucking scene. <laughs> God. I can't oh, believe he was doing that again. That, dude, he's in that latest film, and he's getting his ass kicked still, this fucking guy. P.T. Fenton. <laughs> P.T. Fenton in the house. P.T. Fenton in the house. Yo, it's Bert, yo. the Ringling Brothers, it'll be... How could you twist that in, like, midgets? Like yo, Ringling this P.T. Fenton. Yo. Got midgets on my tail. Yo, I got little people following me everywhere I go. Cause I got the milk titties, yo. Uh, they like the milk out my titties. So they be following me city to city. Yeah, once they get me, they try to fucking milk me. I got milk up in my titties. They be following me these midgets city to city. Trying to get a sip of my titty. Yeah, look at the little dark one back of me. Yeah, he's a little spider monkey jumping on my back. Something on my team. Yo, that's fucked up, man. Come on. All right, Drew, that's about it, right? Yeah, I think we've uh, it's pretty much hit on everything and had some laughs. Yeah, and... Monday night. Uh, we've got the whole week coming up. Everybody have a good fucking week. I'm going to be back Wednesday with um, Nikki for No Hard Feelings on the Patreon. Is that moving to Wednesday, or is that just kind of how it's working out the last yeah, I Yeah, I think it's probably going to be a Monday-Wednesday thing. You know? Just whatever works out better. Well, it gives me or a new flexible too. Name. Like, yeah, um, like if you ever want to move it, or I want to move me and you, we, it just gives it flexibility, you know. And plus, when I was doing both shows the same night, it was taking away like some time from each show. So, you know? yeah, yeah, I, I kind of sense that. Like you, you and Nikki, there were a couple times where you guys were still kind of. Uh, you know, getting into your stuff, and I'm like, oh, well, it's my time to call in, so I guess I'll call in. Yeah, and, it's know, not your fault. It was up or whatever. It's nobody's it's like, fault oh, or shit, anything. That's not what I meant. Yeah, no, it was nobody's fault or anything, but it just works out better because, like, if we're going and we don't want to stop, we don't have to. You know what I mean? It's just better that way. Yeah, I mean, we ended up doing what pretty much two hours on this. Yeah, I had fun, man. Uh, Monday night, I got a case in the Monday nitros. I hate Monday <laughs> nights. It sucks, but uh, so I hope I everybody cases on Mondays. I hate Mondays, man. But um, what's the, when's the next time you're on? Well, tomorrow night, Lesson Serious. There you I go. don't know what our topics are quite yet. I've still got to look at a couple things that were sent to me, but I do know our list is going to be the customer's not always right, so top instances where uh, the customer was not right. There you go. Drew, tomorrow night. Um, and then Wednesday, come and join us on the Patreon for No Hard Feelings. Uh, all right, Drew, I'll talk to you, brother. All right. Sounds good, man. Thanks again. Have Thank a good one. Thank you. The one and only Drew. 
from the Derailed News and Podcasts. Yeah. And that's it, I guess, for tonight. Uh, Everybody have a good Tuesday. Don't work too hard. If you're in pain, stay out of pain as much as you can. Uh, Ice, you know, do all that. Take care of yourself. Um, And I hate that, man. My knee was killing me today at work. I just wanted to be at home icing my shit up and laying down, but what are you going to do? Um, and, uh, yeah, Wednesday night on the Patreon for No Hard Feelings. I'll see you guys then. Shout out to everybody on the Patreon. Have a good rest of your week. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you guys for being here, hanging out. Hit that like button for me, please. And uh, see you guys soon. Thank you. Peace. Johnny Depp, take us out, bro. It was so bizarre. It was human fecal matter. Fecal and human. I want human fecal matter. I know that if you go on my bed, you and you give me bread. Open sound. Human fecal matter. Human fecal. It was so bizarre. Bizarre and weird. It's so weird. Oh my god, it's so weird. Was human fecal matter? Fecal. It was so bizarre.